What guys, welcome back to Star Wars Review. And today I am reviewing the Star Wars prequel trilogy, uh, which included Star Wars Episode 1, The Phantom Menace, Episode 2, Attack of the Clones, and Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith, which came out May 19th, 1999, um, May 16th, 2002, and May 19th, 2005, and were all directed by George Lucas. And were direct, or written by George Lucas, um, Jonathan Hales, uh, co-wrote Attack of the Clones. And we're all produced by Rick McCallum, it starred Uma McGregor, Hayden Christensen, Natalie Portman, and various other actors and actresses. Um, Liam Neeson, so I believe, top, um, whatever, top builds or whatever it's called on, uh, the Phantom Menace. So yeah, um, and I did reviews of each of these movies, which you can check out in the news back in December. Um, so yeah, but you know, maybe talk about the trilogy as a whole today and whatnot. But um, yeah, I also did a review of the original trilogy, which came out um yesterday, I believe. When this should be going up, and I believe this is at least according on the YouTube studio thing. It says I have 99 videos, so this is my 100th video. Yeah, prequel trilogy review. Um, if I knew that, I probably would have done the original trilogy review instead. Um, because it's the first trilogy and of these types of reviews, obviously if I could I've done it, uh, I would've done, uh the Skywalker Saga review, but I wanted to save that for May 4th and other stuff I need to, uh just want to upload also before that, so yeah, but um you know, I'll see the prequels, um they're not my favorite Star Wars trilogy. The original trilogy is my favorite Star Wars trilogy. Um, and Attack of the Clones is one of my least favorite Star Wars movies. It's either that or Rise of Skywalker. But, um, you know, I do enjoy um, the prequels and definitely Revenge of the Sith. I really do like and the prequels give us the Clone Wars. You know, without the prequels, there wouldn't be no The Clone Wars animated show, so. And I, I love The Clone Wars, and gave me some of my favorite Star Wars thingies, and obviously some of the stuff from The Clone Wars, uh, makes me see some stuff from the prequels a bit differently, it makes me enjoy those things uh, in the prequels more and whatnot. But, um, yeah, obviously. Prequels gave us new characters and new versions of old characters, which I enjoy some, though know, not as much. Um, but you know, also introduced just a whole new uh, side of the Star Wars galaxy. Prequels, one thing a lot of people want to talk about with prequels is the world building and whatnot. Of it, you know, it evolves the world of Star Wars, the galaxy, to something a lot more bigger feeling than, you know, what we see in the original trilogy, and even what, you know, we eventually uh, saw in the um, sequel trilogy. You know, just the world feels a lot bigger in the prequel trilogy, um, than, and, you know, most of it takes place uh, on Coruscant, which is the center of the galaxy, so, yeah, um, in the Star Wars universe, or, well, basically the center of the galaxy, I believe it's a little bit off, but, you know, it, it's basically the center of the galaxy, um, so, yeah, but, yeah, um, one thing, though, with prequels is some of the story stuff I'm just not the biggest fan of. Um, 
definitely in the Phantom Menace and the Irish clones. Um, like, um, there's this, like in the Phantom Menace, um, I really liked, uh, you know, stuff about the Sith returning. They're gone for, you know, a thousand years, and, but now they've returned. Oh, yeah, I really like that. Um, it's just not focused on a lot. You know, the movie's more about the Naboo of a invasion uh, from the Separatist and Anakin on Tatooine. Yeah, I just wish they explored the Sith and Darth Maul more in that movie. It was more about that than on the Naboo invasion. I just didn't really care for that. Um, but out of all the prequels, I will say, The Phantom Menace Sicily definitely has a more original trilogy feel to it than uh, Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith do. Um, you know, it just has that, uh, I don't know, it's just something about it, <laughs> but uh, it just feels different. Um, yeah, see, one thing is, you know, action sequences, um, like the lightsaber battle and Defend the Menace is a lot like, you know, um, lightsaber battles in, like, the original trilogy, more slower pace where Attack the Clones and, um, Revenge of Sith has a lot more fast-paced stuff, um, obviously in, uh, Attack the Clones, um, Anakin, Obi-Wan, and... Yoda versus, um, um, Katugu is not super fast-paced. In fact, that's probably my least favorite lightsaber battle in all of Star Wars, so, um, yeah, uh, but, um, Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon versus Darth Maul is probably my favorite lightsaber battle from, um, the, the prequels, uh, on a, um, uh, I don't know, visual pacing style, um, Anakin vs. Obi-Wan and Revenge of the Sith is on the emotional level, which is what I enjoy the most, though, from Lights Her Mouse, it's definitely the best, but the only thing is I just don't like the pacing and visual of, um, you know, the pacing of fast-paced, one on visually Mustafar is a very visually pleasing planet. Um, CGI lava is not my favorite thing, which I'll get into that stuff in a moment. But um, yeah, uh, and you know, attack the clones. I was more I was more interested in what Obi Wan was doing than what um and Padme were doing. Uh, obviously, Obi Wan is so featured. Heavily in Attack of Clones, but you know, we'll cut back to Anakin and Padme. And, you know, and I'll, I'll talk about this a little bit more later. I just don't really like the romance there, it feels weird. Um, yeah, and Anakin just feels a bit of a creep. Um, yeah. Also, I guess maybe a little forced to, um, so yeah, yeah, I just don't really like the romance, uh, plot in Attack of the Clones. Uh, but, you know, I'll see then once both stories collide, it's a bit better, but then again, you know, it's pretty much all action, the genus, the sub, uh, arena, and... The fight with Dooku, which I already talked about the fight with Dooku, I, it's really not my favorite. And you know, Yoda is my favorite Star Wars character, so, you know, seeing him finally have a lightsaber battle. In fact, both of his lightsaber battles he has in the movies are my favorite. Um, so yeah, uh, but you know, then in Revenge of Sith, I, I liked all, all the, uh, story, uh, plot points and whatnot, and Anakin's fall, 
Uh, the end of the Clone War, Order 66. I really enjoyed all that. Order 66 is one of my favorite Star Wars moments. Definitely probably my favorite moment of the uh, prequels. Um, I just really love it. I'm excited to find it. See that in the Clone Wars. Um, this, uh, you know, in these last two episodes of Clone Wars, but um, yeah, can really enjoy that. And one thing with Revenge of the Sith, it's a great ending to the trilogy. It makes the uh, trilogy as a full feel better because of that. Um, and this is something I. Can like you know a good ending can make a bad or you know just okay story a lot better, but a bad ending can make a good, you know, even great uh, story feel a lot worse because of that. Which I'll be talking about that in my sequel trilogy review. Most likely, we'll see. I haven't rewatched the Rise of Skywalker yet, so I. I need to watch it to really see how I feel about all of that. Um, because you know, I really like the, the Force Awakens and The Last Jedi. Rad Skywalker, though. Yeah. That's all, you know. I'll talk about that in that review and probably a little bit in the Skywalker Saga review, too. But, um, yeah. You know, I just you know, think. Revenge of Sith is a uh, is a good movie. It's not my favorite Star Wars movie, and it, it probably ranks middle of the pack. So yeah, but and that's and because of the uh, CGI, which I'll talk about in a moment. Um, even though it's not ter- terrible or even bad in Revenge of the Sith, it's still can be a bit meh um, in some places. And and can, which I'll talk about that later. But um, yeah. Um, which you know, I'm just getting to the digital effects, CGI, and whatnot right now. If you watch my review of the original trilogy, you'll know that I like practical effects in real sets a lot more than digital um, ones. Uh, when you blend the two, it's fine, and the prequel trilogy does blend the two like a bit on this, uh, you know, uh, several sets. Um, definitely, you know, when they're inside of like buildings or ships it's definitely a blend of the two um and i enjoy those um scenes it's really more when you know for instance on like mustafar it's basically all cgi um and you know other planets like that it's just a lot of cgi um naboo also has you know a bit of CGI um, and whatnot. Yeah, obviously Phantom Menace definitely has the worst CGI of them because it's also the oldest and hasn't aged as well. Um, definitely when they're on Coruscant in the uh, backdrop of Coruscant, it doesn't look very good. <laughs> um, and Revenge of the Sith, you know, looks a lot better because, you know, six years passed in between the release of um, both of them those, um, movies and obviously CGI progressed a lot. Um, obviously CGI has some, it's progressed so much over the years. Um, in some cases, it's hard to tell when uh, CGI is being used in modern, um, or these would technically be more modern movies anyways, but recent, like, you know, like, 20, 15 to now, uh, movies, um, obviously there's still some movies that have bad CGI, like Justice League, um, 
Justice, Justice League has more CGI than the prequel trilogy, that's, you know. Yeah, but, uh, anyways, Justice League is terrible, and I only watched half that movie, so I don't really care. But, um, yeah, you know, some see Phantom Menace, the Boo, lots of CGI there. The Palace is fine. You know, the Blind Palace isn't uh, as much CGI, but, um, you know, there's a lot of, uh, Definitely, like, the scene in the end where the Gungans and droids are fighting doesn't look good. Um, the Gungan city is fine. It really doesn't look too bad. Yeah, um, the pod race is also fine. Um, the pod race is a great scene. It's, it's lost its luster a little bit after watching it so much, but, you know, it's so scene um and yeah obviously also in the movie uh, Yoda uh, had a special edition esca change as in you know, the original theatrical I believe even on the VHS and DVD releases he was a puppet um and then the scene where he's walking around it's you know, a costume I believe Warwick Davis uh, was the one who was in the costume and uh no, definitely the costume one looks weird, but um, in the 2011, I believe it was, uh, Blu-ray version, they changed them to a CGI version, which is the CGI model from Revenge of the Sith, so it's not, you know, 1999 CGI Jar Jar looking Yoda, it's Revenge of the Sith Yoda, which obviously makes it look a lot better, and I'm fine with it, and Phantom Menace side. Yoda looks fine as CGI in Attack of Clones and uh, Revenge of the Sith, so. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I see. And then Attack of Clones effects are. Okay, and Revenge of the Sith are also okay. Um, and, you know. Th that stuff I'm also very nitpicky about. Um, and sometimes it's, you know, I, I definitely probably blow it out of, uh, proportions and it's really not that bad, but, um, it's just because I, I really like, you know, the puppets and practical stuff and whatnot from, like, from the original trilogy. You know, it's, uh, one of the things I've really, you know, fallen in love with, with, uh, those movies and, but not, right, but not, uh, yeah, I've seen no CGI, it's been the sequel trilogy movies too, sequel trilogy though, I, I feel like, uh, with that, blended the best of both worlds, and did something great with that, um, a lot of great practical stuff, and a lot of great digital stuff, which I'll talk about that in a uh, review for that, but, um, yeah, uh, obviously, you know, a lot of, it's not really in the sequel trilogy as much, it was mainly Rogue One, where they uh, do, uh, the CGI, um, like, um, human actor and actresses, oh, well, it wasn't in the Rise of Skywalker, actually, with, um, the one scene they did de-aging on Mark Hamill, then, um, which is the aging CGI looks fine when they're actually, you know, it's the actual actor. That stuff looks fine, but when they're recreating um, an actor or actress, like in Rogue One with Peter Cushing and you know, Carrie Fisher, looks so weird. Why is Kyle Walker? Did it again with Carrie Fisher. And that flashback scene looks so weird. Um, but yeah, but you know, that's a topic whole another time, and yeah, um, but yeah, you know, the CGI, um, really, it doesn't age well in The Phantom Menace, the Tiger Clones, it's aged okay, and also in uh, Revenge of Sith, it's aged fine, not great, but fine, um, for both of those, but, uh, yeah, anyways, uh, I guess I'll touch on the story a little bit 
um, not trying to too, too much, but eh, I mean, the whole conflict between you know, the CIS, Separatists, and the Republic, eh, definitely okay, I enjoy it, obviously it's shown a lot more in Clone Wars, and I really like it in there, and you know, the war. Honestly, that's definitely in Revenge of the Sith, out of, you know, all the Star Wars movies. Revenge of the Sith really shows the war part, but, um, you know, obviously Star Wars, one of the messages is very, you know, anti-war, uh, kind of message, even though it's called Star Wars, but, uh, yeah, and, you know, obviously I enjoy stuff with the Sith returning and whatnot, and you know, taking over in Revenge of the Sith, and... You know, with the Jedi, I, I actually you know, liked seeing something totally different than what was really described to the Jedi in the original trilogy, and, um, yeah, and I'll see this time it's mainly shown in, like, Clone Wars a lot more and whatnot, but seeing how the Jedi, you know, were, you know, they lost their way in who they were at one point, what was described in a real future original trilogy, but by the time of the prequel trilogy, and, you know, kind of reason they failed, and, you know, the Sith took over was, you know, because of that, and, you know, obviously, they are the good guys, you know, they use the Force in a selfless way, or, you know, the Sith use it in a selfish way, but, you know, they really weren't the good guys, um, you know, they're playing with, you know, the politics all the time, and they're in a cool trilogy, and, you know, they really let, let the, uh, Sith, uh, take over, and I, I do really enjoy that, and being explored a lot more, like, Clone Wars, and other stuff, I, it's really made me like the Jedi of the prequel trilogy era a lot more, and I, uh, really enjoy that, if it, they went into that a lot more in, um, the prequel trilogy movies, uh, it would have been, uh, you know, pretty good, um, and I would have really liked the movies, um, obviously, you know, You know, Star Wars still is, you know, you still need the action and all of that. And obviously the stories are still definitely made for 12-year-olds with, you know, in all ages kind of feel to it, but core audiences, 12-year-olds, um, and that's obviously something George Lucas has said uh, even himself, but um, yeah, <coughs> but uh, <coughs> but uh, I'll do some uh, characters on and Rick Jules just asked some of my favorite characters, um, some you know, my least favorite characters too, but I. Uh, really say that with all three trilogies. It definitely has some of my favorite characters and some of my least favorite characters. It's how it goes. Um, so yeah, but, uh, you know, it was some, um, honestly, returning characters and whatnot, like Obi-Wan, Yoda, obviously Anakin and whatnot too, um, but, you're talking about Obi-Wan, uh, first, there's obviously a big focus of the story of the prequel trilogy, and I love Ewan McGregor as Obi-Wan, excited to see more of him in the uh, Obi-Wan Disney Plus series, um, but, you know, I, I just really like him as a character in the prequels, what not, um, <coughs> uh, 
<laughs> and then, uh, and Yoda. Yoda is my favorite character in Star Wars, and I've said it before, and I'm saying it again, I love Yoda. Um, even though he might have he's kind of a dickhead, um, he's not as bad as, like, Mace Windu. Mace Windu is a dickhead, but, um, yeah, uh, but you know, I, I've always liked Yoda and Obi-Wan. I'll see, you know, in the original trilogy, they're uh, definitely, you know, Obi-Wan, uh, a lot more wise than not. Yoda in this trilogy also has some that wisdom to him, and Obi-Wan, not as much because, you know, he is younger. Um, but I, so. I really liked both of them. Um, Palpatine, now seems returning once again. He's great in uh, Return of the Jedi, but you know, he's just as good in Phantom Menace and Attack of Clones, and most definitely in Revenge of the Sith. And, you know, um, you know, I'm saying, you know, Anakin isn't my uh, favorite girl. You know, the Hayden Christensen uh, playing Anakin. Zack Clemson and Red just isn't my favorite. In fact, he's probably one of my least favorite Star Wars characters. Um, I like him a lot more than Clone Wars, but you know when him and McDermott as Palpatine are you know, together in Revenge of Sith, it's great. I really like those uh, moments. Um, but you know, Palpatine and McDermott is just great as the, uh, character, and I, I really like, you know, in the Phantom Menace Attack Clones, him being like, oh, this nice, older politician, and whatnot, but, uh, you know, deep down, he's a terrible, evil, you know, person, which, uh, we eventually see in Revenge of Sith, and what we saw in, uh, Return of the Jedi, um, but, you know, Anakin, um, you know, young Anakin's or whatever, right? But I don't care. But um, you know, I just don't really like Hayden Christensen uh, as Anakin. Obviously, some of it is definitely bad writing. Bad writing is the writing is definitely the worst part of the trilogy. It's there's a lot of very bad dialogue. Um, uh, and what on which. Yeah, and obviously it was some better writing. It could have been, you know, a lot better, but, uh, you know. I will say, once he falls and becomes Darth Vader, Pink Christian was is perfect for that. He did good, but everything before that is just... Yeah, feels like they just casting him on that fact alone. In the Tactical Clones, he is just very unlikable, a bit of a creep, um, and honestly, I guess the problem is, you know, he's not the guy Obi-Wan described in New Hope, because Obi-Wan, you know, describes him as a, you know, a, a good person and a dear friend and whatnot, um, which it's, watching the Tactical Clones, it's like, so many red flags are going off. How how do you not know? Um, but then, you know, we see the character in the Clone Wars. And it's much better. See, guy who is he knew a good. It seems like a good person and whatnot, and a dear friend to everyone. But then when you know, we see the little you know, glimpses of uh, the darkness in him, and I I enjoy that. A lot more, obviously, you know, with the Clone Wars, it's a TV show, and TV shows can do that stuff much better than movies can. Um, but yeah, I, I just didn't really like, it's mainly just Attack of the Clones, I didn't like them in Attack of the Clones. Um, but yeah, Padme, um, well, with Anakin and Attack of the Clones, and it just, the, the romance plot between... Padme and Anakin, as I just 
don't really like it. Um, yeah, I don't see Natalie Portman. She's a great act. <clears throat> she's a great actress. And whatnot, and definitely in a lot you know, later stuff she's on. Um, but, you know, I just really didn't like, you know, her as much. But then again, it's a lot of it is just her character in the movies is being the rom romantic uh, interest for uh, Anakin, and this feels like the character gets dragged down because of that. And Clone Wars, you know, her and Anakin and the romance is a lot better. Um, but yeah, uh, and Padme, I I liked her in uh, the Phantom Menace. Uh, a lot more than uh, Attack of Clones and Revenge of Sith. Um, I feel like, you know, just dragged down because of the romance plot. But, um, other characters, Mace Windu, he's fine. He's an unlikable dickhead, though. Um, the unlikable part about him was he's played by uh, Samuel L. Jackson. He was a very likable guy, and most of the characters he in fact, I would say every other character I've seen Samuel L. Jackson play is likable, even if they're a villain. Um, which I don't even really think if I've ever seen Samuel L. Jackson play a villain. I probably have. Uh, but yeah. Um, <laughs> Qui Gon Jinn, you know, Liam Neeson. Uh, I liked. Yeah, wish we got to see him live a little bit longer. But he was also an idiot, betting everything on Anakin winning the pod race. Was dumb. At least it paid off. Um, Jar Jar is Jar Jar. Not really much to say there. Um, the villains, Darth Maul. Um, a lot like Boba Fett. Very cool. Um, but not much of a character. I did, you know, you know, I do think Maul was a great character in the Clone Wars and Rebels. So yeah, in fact. Might have had more dialogue in Solo than he did in Phantom Menace. Um, or about the same. Uh, <laughs> Count Dooku, General Grievous are fine. Yeah, they're my favorite villains, but you know, okay. Um, uh, obviously General Grievous is a is a little pussy, so yeah. Um, Jango Fett is also fine. Um. Not bad. I was more of a character than Boba Fett, but um, you know, he's cool that you know, he was a template for the clones. But because of that, I'm just not a huge fan of Boba Fett being a clone. Obviously unaltered, but still. Um, but yeah, uh, probably a character I'm forgetting about. Um, I don't know. But yeah, overall. I like, I like the prequel trilogy. Um, definitely, um, I I mentioned this, you know, last in the um, review for the original trilogy. For you, know, perfect trilogy. The Lord of the Rings trilogy is definitely, I've been probably the most perfect trilogy, mainly because you know I said in the last you know, video that, that it's a really just one big nine twelve hour film. And this, the prequel trilogy, is definitely the closest to that for the Star Wars trilogies. It's the most, you know, as a, for an overarching story, it's definitely the best for that. But, um, you know, the story doesn't mean it's a great story, though. It definitely uh, has weak parts and weak characters, too. Um, but, you know, there are good parts for, you know, story and characters, too. But, you know, also, just not a big uh, fan of huge CGI set pieces we see a lot in the trilogy. But when it's practical and sets and the CGI are mixed together, it's okay. Um, but, yeah, you know, I like this trilogy. The original trilogy is definitely my favorite trilogy overall, and... Or not. 
I don't know which trilogy I like more between the prequels and the sequels. Um, before the Rise of Skywalker, though, I would have said the sequels were, you know, I like them more than the uh, prequels, but, you know, after Rise of Skywalker, I'm just not sure. I'm gonna rewatch the uh, sequel trilogy as a whole before I do, um, the sequel trilogy review and the Skywalker Saga review and whatnot. And, uh, I'll probably also just be doing a uh, second Rise of Skywalker review also. See what change, see if I like it more, like it less. Um, you know, we'll see. But, um, or if I like it about the same. Uh, if nothing really changed for me, my opinion, I, I might just do the sequel trilogy review. We'll, we'll see. But, um, yeah. Uh, and, you know, sequel. For this review and the original trilogy review, I didn't rewatch. Really the uh, trilogies because I I've watched them so many times, you know, back to back, um, you know, for all three movies in the trilogy before, or you know, at least in like a two to three day period, watched all three. Um, so yeah, where the sequels I haven't done that. Obviously, well, I I, I did watch you know, Force Awakens and the Last Jedi before um, seeing the Rise of Skywalker, but. It's just a different feel to it. Um, so, yeah. Uh, but, yeah. Um, I didn't write a grade down. I, I don't know what I really want to give it. Um, for a grading. Yeah, yeah. I am not going to give it a grading. I really didn't want to do... I didn't, didn't want to do a grading for the original trilogy, but I did anyways. So, yeah. I guess... If I were to grade the prequels, it'd probably be in you. Know, anywhere between a, you know, B, B plus, A minus, A, around there. I don't know. But, um, yeah. Anyways, uh, you know, like I said, I will be doing a sequel trilogy review and, uh, Skywalker Saga review on Monday next week on May 4th. Uh, Star Wars Day, so you can check that out, and yeah, the review was about as long, maybe a little longer than the original trilogy one, but yeah, anyways, I have a Star Wars and I'll catch you guys in the next one.